This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. So I'd like to begin uh, with Sally Borghese. Uh, Sally, can you give us a little bit of history about uh, your story and uh, your granddaughter and uh, kind of in chronological order of, of what happened? Okay. Um, my granddaughter, of course, her picture is on my shirt. I wear it everywhere I can. Um, I was raising her from um, birth to the age of about five years and 33 days when they took her from me on a Valentine's Day of all days. And um, it was kind of like an, an ambush because we were in court for um, a hearing on my daughter's case and it had nothing to do with me but they asked me if I would testify and I got on the stand to testify and I was somewhat attacked by the guardian ad litem attorney and um, the prosecutor, um, the uh, CPS workers, you know, um, and the judge, the judge allowed this, and this is um, somewhat of a violation of, of the court rules because you're not supposed to be in, um, taken to court without giving the proper notice that uh, they're thinking of removing a child from you. So they're supposed to give you like a two-week notice um, that they're going to or th are thinking of, get, of removing a child from your care. And this wasn't done. And the judge did reprimand um, those um, in the courtroom regarding that, um, but she didn't stop the proceeding either. And um, as far as I'm concerned, that's a violation of my, of my uh, due process. And so anyway, the hearing went on over um, a period of three days for very short periods of time. On those three days, it wasn't full three days. But by the time they got to um, the end of the hearing, it was a decision to remove my granddaughter um, from my care and place her into foster care. And the reasons that were used um, were rather, um, in my estimation, useless reasons. I mean, abuse, neglect were never even cited, and those are the prerequisites for removing a child, according to CPS manual. Um, I personally also believe that to remove a child from um, a relative or parental care that um, there, there should be a criminal reason. Um, mm -hmm. If a person cannot be criminally prosecuted in um, having a child removed from them, then um, the state should work with people if, if they find that there's something that they don't really approve can, of. Can you tell us what were the uh, <clears throat> um, accusations or the charges or the, the basis for having your uh, granddaughter removed from your care? Well, they were really very silly. Um, the caseworker for my daughter's case was in the house visiting with my granddaughter and I. And my granddaughter, being four years old, really had no use for food. Um, she didn't care to eat, even in her preschool and, and things like that. She would never eat with the kids. You know, she was always busy, busy, busy. And so um, I said to her, I said, sweetheart, if you finish your lunch, I'll give you a cookie. And um, so in court, that was used as uh, the excuse that was given was that that was bad parenting. Mm -hmm. um, yet I understand that in the 
uh, classes that they give parents when they're uh, removing children from parent, parent care, that those parents um, go to classes where they're told to reward a child for something like mm -hmm. needing to and eat. So you were already doing that. Right. So, opinion. you know, it wasn't something, I mean, I didn't offer a cookie every single meal or right. anything. I did it because I wanted her to, to finish while the caseworker was in the house and, and get done m most expeditiously. So um, then also um, she uh, went to use the, the restroom and um, she liked uh, to be sure that things were okay in the restroom so um, she would ask for somebody just to come and make sure things were fine and so I did that and that was used um, stated that um, I was making a child dependent upon an adult at the age of four to do that whether that be in the public restroom or whether that be in the home and I thought children were dependent upon adults, especially at, at the age of four. So, you know, I didn't quite understand that either. Then, of course, the third reason that they sort of uh, just conjured up, to, I think, at the last minute was that maybe I would let my daughter and my granddaughter visit someday. And um, when the judge asked the caseworker why, um, the caseworker said, uh, oh, a gut feeling that maybe someday I might let the two of them visit. But go Re ahead. Really, what, what, it does. Are there you other know? things that, were on, that are on the court record that uh, were the basis of removal? Basis Basically, removal? those are, th are the reasons that were used. And then, of course, in the judge's decision, she went um, through the entire case of my daughter. And um, I don't know what that had to do with me. Mm. I was raising my granddaughter. And... Um, one would certainly think that as a grandma, grandmother, you'd have a, a right to take care of her. Right. And, um, you know, there, there was another agency involved in it, um, in the case from the beginning, and they said, you know, th this is a loving relationship between a grandmother and a granddaughter, and there's nothing wrong here. But in, when it came to um, the... the final determination of what was going on with the case, um, basically it boiled down to the fact that the caseworker um, did not like me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I've had many people tell me this. Um, the um, Office of Children Ombudsman in Lansing, which investigates cases as to whether or not um, they're uh, handled correctly by the agencies, uh, investigated and said that they could find no reason mm -hmm. for um, my granddaughter to be removed. However, they did find fault with the agency and they cited the agency. But the agency um, only has to say, well, we'll do better next time. Mm -hmm. I would like to know what is wrong with did this you, time. Were, were you uh, uh, given any kind of uh, opportunity to make things better at home, uh, parenting classes, uh, any kind of probationary period or anything? No, because they really didn't have anything um, that... I wasn't given any notice that it was going to happen. I wasn't given any hope that I was going to get her back. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Um, it was just that she was gone. She left on a Monday 2005 Valentine's Day and on Friday I got to visit with her at the agency and at the agency um, she basically knew she was going to already be adopted and that her name would change. Uh, I'm really interested in, in uh, hearing more of your story and seeing the actual court transcripts. Do you have a copy of the court transcript? Yes, I do. Okay. And now I know that you've, we've talked before the program and you've done some other work uh, in this whole thing in, in uh, it might be valuable to, to bring in that court transcript uh, for another program and go into that in a little more depth. Uh, it would, yeah. yes. So, uh, you know, for, for many folks, I think our, our experience is uh, we get a traffic ticket or something, mm -hmm. and we're treated respectfully, and we know the routine, and, you know, I've had a few traffic tickets, and I've even uh, said to the police officer, well, I guess I needed that. And, uh, you know, so... Your story seems to have a, a very different flavor from, you know, the typical experience that a person has for 
uh, you know, things like a traffic ticket and so forth. Very so, much so. Yeah, very yes. different. So. And for uh, a very much more serious, highly yes. important issue. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah. to compare a traffic ticket to a child's life and relationship with their family, and there's no, yeah. no comparison there at all. For sure. Sally, did they try in any way to keep the child with you or to keep the child in your home or help you some way to keep, so you could keep taking care of Rio? No, there wasn't any offer of anything. They wanted her and they took her. And that's exactly yeah. what it boiled down to. I'd like to go to uh, our next guest, Marina Ivanova. Could you tell us uh, your story briefly uh, of what happened with your children and Child Protective Services and so forth? My name is Marina Ivanova. I'm from Ukraine. I um, came to this country and married an American man and have uh, two children from marriage. My daughter Maria, seven years old, and my son John, almost six. Um, marriage is not uh, going well. Um, we divorced because domestic violence occurred and um, there's been quite a little bit of experience here in this country for me. Um, I feel very hurt. Uh, hurt from my abusive husband and hurt from the system. Um, I've been separated from my children for quite some time. I um, don't been at home for nine years. I don't see my mother for so long. I don't see my children already for almost three years. The last time I see them, um, it's been one week before Thanksgiving. And I have no idea where they are located. I cannot call them, I cannot talk with them, I cannot write them, I cannot see them, I don't have no pictures. I fight in the court with everything I got. I um, been in the regular court, I lost it. Um, I lost it my visitations with my children, I lost it my parental rights. Even um, I never been American citizen here um, and my children have a dual citizenship but never brought into the court. Uh, attention and even America recognized dual citizenship in my country but they never talk about it what is violate children's rights in the whole process they violate my rights and my constitutional rights and civil rights and um, I lost uh, my uh, court of appeals on um, on the case I filed Supreme Court of the state of Michigan I lost it I lost my Supreme Court of United States and um, I've been involved uh, a couple times with immigrations, what I uh, came uh, to this country with the permission to enter the, the country. I have a green card for two years, but because of um, uh, first the domestic violence that my husband did not file proper paperwork with immigration, so I did not get green card right away, and um, that's give me a, um, have a green card later, and then um, I uh, I've been also. Um, the immigration process with uh, immigration lawyer who never find my paperwork. So I have quite a challenge with a few things, with the court system, with immigration, with um, support of the place to live or what to eat. And um, as a survival, uh, it's kind of hard to do. And I try my best. And um, now I am in kind of in a federal procedure and I will try everything what I can do to get my children back and I, I really believe what the God create people can separate I love my children dearly and what they separate me from my children it's like they hurt me deep within and on every level they can possibly hurt a mother and a woman and um, I come in here to have American dream and I have an American nightmare I'm looking for changes. I um, heard so many stories of Americans who hurt, and I'm very disappointing, and I'm involved uh, with a lot of people, and I will try to make a difference, and I hope that a lot of people who are hurt will join us, and um, we help, can help each other, and can make a difference. Um, I can tell you a lot of different things, but, um, Time is short, so. Um. Yeah, well, I could certainly uh, sympathize with, with you. I, I lost a, a son 28 years ago, and uh, if you were to measure emotional hurt on a scale of one to ten, losing my son was a 37. Wow. And uh, I'm sure for you, the loss of your uh, of your children was, uh, 
you know, for something that seemed uh, unfair and unjust in, in a country where we uh, like to believe that we, we have the uh, land of the free, the home of brave, we, we believe in liberty and justice for all, uh, innocent until proven guilty, uh, maybe there's some things we need to do to reform our system. Oh, definitely. And that's what our organization is about. Uh, what briefly, uh, what were the premises for uh, taking your children? Uh, well, it's a long story, but make story short that I leave my children with a babysitter who left. And as the children left unattended, so the neighbors called the police. And as according, I, ha we ha I have a cultural differences uh, during the whole my case. Certainly. And people don't understand my culture. And they tell me if I am uh, in America, I have to act as American, do as American. And mm -hmm. whatever Americans do, I have yeah. to do. So I think it's not right because I am from Ukraine, and I will never forget where I'm from. Certainly. And my children have dual citizenship. They have to know the heritage. They have to know um, yeah. where, where they're from and um, the culture and everything. So I think as a parent, I have a right yeah. to raise my children the way I feel is the best for my children. And um, it's But the incident that led to uh, you uh, losing your children basically is something that happened while a babysitter was taking care of them. Right. And, and, and <coughs> anything else brought up in court uh, that happened other than the, uh, the babysitter situation? Yes, a lot of different things. Um, first, they don't believe the babysitter is there. Okay. Um, even it's there, but cannot prove it. Um, second, uh, because of the cultural differences, my house is not up to standard, and they very exaggerating to the extreme the condition of the house, but um, as a lot of people where I'm involved with, and um, they have opinion and tell me that the house is not as bad as the social workers and everybody who want so my children the cleanliness try to of make your it. House, uh, yes, it make a big it. issue. Okay. Um, and also the depression uh, involved uh, is a big issue too because um, the depression affect me as a human and as a mother and um, mm -hmm. as a condition of the house as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't really um, um, to help myself or my children. And the people do not understood the so it's just, um, so it's just because you, the had, problems. you had an illness that they, that was part of the reason for taking your children. It wasn't spelled out acti actions that you had uh, taken against the children. Were, were any of those spelled out in the court records? Well, um, the cleanliness of the house is make a huge issue in the court as according to American culture. And they used uh, this issue against me uh, in extreme and exaggerating, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so they're accusing yeah. me, not the help, but accusing me. Yeah, that unfortunately is not the first time that we've heard that story, no, is it, Judith? No, not at all. No, uh, cleanliness of the house. Uh, I didn't know that was a measure and, and, of being a good parent. How is there a, a written standard on how you describe that, and uh, you know, that's, that's interesting. But I'd like to take the, uh, the last part of our program to just um, to, sh to share some, some uh, bigger picture uh, facts on, on uh, what is happening. This isn't just a matter of two gals who've had their children taken. I know in another program we had two other gals uh, uh, that came. A uh, husband of, of one was, would gladly have come if he, but he'd already missed enough time from work through the, the case. But, uh, and we've, uh, we've talked with others. So this is just not a couple of people who've had this problem. This is a widespread problem. I, I mentioned uh, on a previous program an uh, article written by Senator Nancy Schaefer of Georgia. And the fact that she has met with so many people and taken the time to write and post a four-page letter uh, with uh, recommendations and conclusions and then beside that some exhibits. You know, that indicates that this is not a small problem or a problem that just happened last week or last year. This is becoming a widespread problem nationwide. Uh, Sally, um, you mentioned something that uh, I believe it was Jim Hennessy said in a hearing, was it? Uh, tell us who Jenna, Jim Hennessy is, if I got that name right. Right. Okay. And, Jim. and where was it said and what did he say? Well, in uh, uh, a committee, a standing committee of um, in the House of Representatives, the ho uh, representatives, um, Jim Hennessy is Director of Child and Family Services for the Department of Human Services in Lansing. 
and he made a statement that Michigan terminates the rights of more parents than any other state. Um, personally, I, I don't know why he would make a statement like that because, um, you know, I would want to keep that kind of under my hat if I were him. But um, can I, can I just interrupt and read? There's just a paragraph. Now I read this in another program, and I hope you bear with me. But I think it's it's important for our uh, viewers to to see this and to be aware that there is a a structural problem uh, that makes this a nationwide problem. Uh, this is one of uh, uh, Senator Schaefer's conclusions. Says. She concludes that the Adoption and Safe Families Act, set in motion by President Bill Clinton, offered cash bonuses to the states for every child they adopted out of foster care. In order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protective services need more children. They must have the merchandise, and that's her word, the merchandise, children, in parentheses, that sell. And you must have plenty of them so the buyer can choose. So that apparently relates to the billboards that we see along the highway about uh, uh, looking f for foster parents, uh, maybe adoptive parents. But she continues here, some counties are known to give a $4,000 bonus for each child adopted and an additional 2000 for a special needs child. Employees work to keep the federal dollars rolling. Now she writes from Georgia, but the funding structure is a federal funding structure and it applies to uh, the nationwide problem. But uh, so that's, that's kind of what that, that gives our viewers an insight on, uh, on what's happening. And, and that was an insight that, that helped me because I was accustomed to, you know, being treated respectfully in the uh, interchange that I had with the law, you know, things like speeding tickets. Uh, and I could go on to the long story of, of, uh, of the respect that I, that I did have, just simply of who I was and who my father was and so forth. And my father was not, a, you know, a special powerful person. It's just that yeah. the judge recognized think, him as a respectable yeah. person. But, but I think most of us as parents are shocked to find that out that if we do one little thing wrong and the right person sees or hears us and calls Child Protective Services, I can have the children out of our home in minutes without even uh, a police presence or any chance to get the appropriate action to defend yourself yeah. and then not only along with that when you go to court after that the judge uh, takes up final steps in producing parental termination and the judge does that on only the the simple hearing of what the caseworker says mm -hmm. and there's no guards there there's no protection and all of a sudden your parental rights are just terminated. Mm -hmm. Just like that, there's no jury, no trial by your peers. It seems like something that so vital and important in our lives as our children, we're just not treating this whole situation yeah, very Losing properly. your children seems like the worst possible uh, consequences, but it's, it's, a, it's a process that seems to have the least due process. So would you agree with that statement? I sure would. Yeah, that's, that's, that's can, something that was expressed in one of our early meetings of our organization uh, several years ago. The worst consequences, the least due process. But Sally, tell us more of what you've learned. You've been pursuing this uh, relentlessly since uh, Rio was taken. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I am amazed, you know, every time I see you, you're bringing somebody else along. Uh, and making well, uh, <clears throat> a lot of cases come your case. come your way, you know. Um, they just keep finding you, and and it's amazing how many cases there are. Um, and yet, it's not something that is commonly known to the average mm -hmm. citizen or taxpayer. Mm -hmm. What is going on in our family courts? Um, and and like you said, this is is widespread. It's nationwide. It, I mean, you know, Kent County or Michigan or whatever. It's not unique. We, the, this is all over the country. Um, we'll take, for instance, down there in Texas, that uh, those several hundred children that they recently took. Um, yeah, about 400 children taken from right. a polygamous group and, and just taken in mass rather well, than having a... Uh, So-called polygamous group. You know, I'm not even sure that was established. Yeah, okay. That was just used as a, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, a reason to just all of us snatch all these children away. Okay, other uh, 
other facts and, and statistics that our viewers should uh, become aware of and um, from well, either of you? You know, there, um, children um, die six times faster in the systems care, in the state care. Six times mm -hmm. more Six often times in foster care, foster care than in parental care, per biological parents' home. Right. Six right. times. Right. Wow. Well, uh, but if children are dying six times more frequently in foster care than they are in uh, the care of their biological parents, then one would think we need to kind of put the brakes on this uh, pattern of taking children from their biological parents and putting them into foster homes. Very much and so. the other thing that's interesting there is that biological parents have no screening. Foster care parents are screened by the state in order to supposedly stay safe. John, right? often the foster parents are given money, they're given homes, they're given Section yeah. 8 rental. They're, they're set up so they can take care of these children wonderfully. And uh, I know in Sally's case, yeah. her granddaughter Rio needed some surgery. Well, Sally was a hardworking grandmother and this was pretty specialized surgery yeah. and she was going to pay for this all herself and she wasn't asking the state or government mm -hmm. for any money at all mm -hmm. and they took her granddaughter away and put her in a foster care home where they're giving the foster care parents all kinds of money to pay for taking care of her. Yeah. Perhaps even yeah, the okay. surgery. I don't know how that's come out. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time. I want to thank uh, each of our guests for coming. I want to thank you for watching the program tonight. You can tune in next week at the same time and view another edition of Silent Voices. I want to remind everybody that we have Citizens for Parental Rights meetings right here at the studio at WKTV. 5261 Clyde Park Avenue, right here in Wyoming, Michigan. That's every third Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Hope you can come out and join us. I also, if uh, you like to join a social network, you can join our network at miparamorites.ning.com. That's miparamorites.ning.com. If you'd like to be a guest on this program, or send us an email with some comments, you can send that to us at miparamorites at gmail.com. That's miparamorites gmail.com. Once again, thank you for watching the program. And remember, until next time, your voice can make the difference.